Train kept her rolling up. She was pretty from New York City. What's happening? This is it. You asked for it, you got it. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. You know, we're doing it. Doing it, doing it. How's everybody doing on this shout out Sunday? Yes, Victoria. Incendiary device. It's going to jump off Saturday night in Ardsley. I assume you're going to be there by your enthusiasm. Yo, Ryan Bland Ake, that's my man right there. What's up? That's my man. I bet Ryan Ake loves my. I, I bet. I bet Ryan Ake loves mind funk. Am I right, Ryan? I, I, I get that sense. You know, Scott Earth silence equals death. Come on now, the gang's all here. You know, saw mind funk three times in Edinburgh. Is that right? I guess that was a I guess that was a frequent stop on, on, on their tour, you know? Yes, happy birthday to Stigma. Is that yesterday? Yes, ciao from Italy. Good. Yes. Stigma's birthday was yesterday. That is that is correct. You know? B 
Big Rob, bitter uproar, A7 alumni represent. What's happening, bro? I hope you're well. You know, yes, chemical waste. We're going to talk all about it. You know why? Because this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, Grunge and Grime Soap Company, and DTFM Vinyl Distro. And today on the show, Devin's going to be coming on. He's going to be doing a show and tell, showing us some cool stuff that's good, it's going on out there. Yeah, I, you know, I got, of course. Ryan Bland, you know, of course you love Mind Funk, bro. Yep. One of the cool things about doing this show is I get to, you know, when I do my homework, I, you know, I do a, a deep dive into, into, you know, the, whoever the guest is and the bands are. And, and, you know, I, I get, I hear stuff that I, I never heard before. You know, I go deep, uh, you know, listen, I listened to a lot of mind funk this week and they were great. They were great. Mind funk was a great band. They were great, really great musicianship, great band. You know, I really, really enjoy, I really enjoyed that, you know. Um, that said, that said, let's clear the deck a little bit. Let's get the hardcore shutter bug on here. On here. What we have here. <laughs> right? The early 90s were a great time. Let, you know, were the early 90s a great time, hardcore shutter bug? Absolutely. Absolutely a fan. What were you doing up early? What were you doing? Swinging big dick around out there in Long Island? Long Island's a beautiful place. <laughs> Sundance. <laughs> that's that's a scum dance, as we would scum, call it. Scum dance, right? Oh man, the ah, uh, cool. uh, yeah. I was just looking. I was just looking to see how old Ozzy was, because yesterday was Ozzy's birthday too. He was born in '48. Is that right? Ozzy Osbourne and Vinny Stigma are born on the same day? Yeah. That's kind of rad. That's kind of rad. And Lou DiBella from uh, Sub-Zero. <laughs> right. And actually today is Mina Caputo's birthday. That's right. So a lot of... We like to pay attention to these things. Happy birthday, all the birthday people out there. Wish our people well, yep. you know? Yep. How old's Ozzy now? If he was born in 48, that makes him 70 what? 73? Four? 74? Crazy. It's crazy. Well, crazy. Listen, but that's rock, how it goes. Millions rock, of people. Yeah. Rock and roll is no longer a young man's game, you know? Maybe it's not too late. Learn how to love. Yeah. Hey, what can I say? All right. Listen, you asked for it, you got it. This is photo of the day. This is a good one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, photo of the day. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Photo of the day. <laughs> oh, it's uh, right. This is a work of art right here. This is classic. This is this is classic. I don't know if, if the attention to detail is the fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody does anybody know what this is? Is there anybody out there? Is there anyone at all? You know? I don't see anybody. The, I don't know if anybody's in the chat room. That, that, hello? That, that was, that, hello? Yes, the pit. <laughs> yes, yes, true. Yes. Right. Brooks Cake. That's right. This is, this is Women of the Pit right here. Yeah, this is, this is, yep, Silence of the Lambs, Silence of the Lambs, Lotion. Yep. Right. But this this was Gollum, my precious, my precious. <laughs> yep. So this was um, last night, right? We. Uh, yeah. That's right. Thank you, Sally. This is Brooke in Silence of the Lambs, and that's a vegan cake that was made for her last night. Was the event? This was the cake, and a uh, fucking beautiful cake. Yo, I don't even think we got to this cake. No, I, I don't either. And I was dying to know what it tasted like. Yeah. Put the lotion in the basket. Absolutely. Yep. What a, what a beautiful cake, right? And, I mean, uh, excuse me? The, the, it even has the nail scratches on the wall. 
And it says New York Hardcore on the bottom on the right there. On yeah, it. it's the, the whoever did this. Now, can you eat? The, you know, can you eat the girl and the bucket? Yeah, and all that? I think it's what, what is that called? Marzipan? Yeah, you think you can eat it all? Of course you can eat it, bro. It's a fucking cake. <laughs> and and you know what? And you, you can't imagine this cake was huge. I yeah. mean, it was like it was. It was a huge it was cake. it was like a like ten inches high, and so so so, so, so you, you, yes, it tastes like desperation and abandonment. Good one, <laughs> <laughs> good one. But let me tell you what happened yesterday is that before we were in there doing the event, I was moderating the, the book event for Brooke. They had like this uh, new wave of British heavy metal book event in there. I mean, yep. sadly, there was like five people there and. He had another cake with, um, with Eddie Eddie from Iron Maiden on it. Yep. And that fucking cake was so big also. It yeah. fed everybody from that event and from the Brook event. And we never even got into this cake. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know where this cake is now. Yeah, I but don't know. He was, I, at the end, Mark was trying to give it to somebody. And like people were like, yeah. It's like, yo, I'm not taking that home, bro. Yeah, this, this, was, uh, this is a work of art right here. Jeff Bronx says, nice beard, Drew. One day you'll catch up. <laughs> I don't know how long, I don't know how this beard, how much longer this beard's gonna last. I'm, un yeah, I'm look under at a lot of pressure, picture. man. <laughs> I'm under a lot of pressure and I'm cracking. Uh, here's, a, here's a couple of other pictures uh, from yesterday. Um, here's, here's actually a crowd, a, a bit of a crowd shot. It was packed. Yeah. It was freaking packed yesterday. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's Larry the wolf. Kelly. There's Mr. Wolf, Larry Kelly on the left. Um, there's Lori Dawn. What's that? Elisa. Yep. Yo, do you know who that is behind Lori Dawn? Directly behind or by, behind yeah. the counter? Directly behind Lori Dawn. Who is that? That's Tony Natelli, bro. I went to high school. I went to high school with him, tenth grade. Uh, hey. Yo, growing up in New York City, that's Tony Natelli showed up last night, bro. You know what's yeah. crazy? And you know who's Chris just Larry Kelly, yep. who's mm -hmm. just outside the frame here? Yeah, Anthony. Uh, just past where Lori is was uh, Mary Louise Parker. Listen, you talk about my you, my home girl, Mary, my home girl. Here you go. Funny you should pull that card. Hold on. Here's me, Brooke, and Mary Louise Parker right here doing it last night. Oh, there night. you go. For those that may. You know, recognize uh, Mary Louise. Of course, she was, you know, in Weeds for many years. And uh, she was in, you know, Fried Green Tomatoes. Just a, a great actress. Done a lot. Incredible body of work. You know? So Yeah, this, this was a really, like, you can't really tell from these pictures, but this place was jammed. It was packed. Yeah. No, it was yeah, really, it was a great, yeah. great, um, she had great stories. All the old school, like hardcore girls, came out, you know, and yep. Uh, yep, it was a really fun one. It was, it was, it was a great, it was a great event. And uh, wait, I, I got, I, I got it, I got a couple more. Hold on. Uh, here's, of course, here is the women of the pit, along with Brooke and the infamous cake. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brooke got a kick out of it. It was cool. It was very. It was <laughs> yeah, very. I, I had to hold back my, my Silence of the Lambs mania. Although I did give her, a little Hannibal Lecter statue off of my shelf. Did you? I did. Yeah, and, uh, and she's you know she was awesome about it. She was great. There's uh there's me Brooke and, for those who may not know that is you know. One of the patron saints of this show, that's Mark Yoshi from Generation Records right there. Oh, yeah. He, yo, honestly, this show would not be what it is, uh, you know, without him. He is a incredible supporter of this show above and beyond the call of duty, man. You know? And you both color coordinated pretty well with that one. Yeah, so. I got, yo, check out my kicks, man. I'm wearing the, I'm wearing the, the, the Oxblood Doc Martens, oh, too. Nice, yeah. 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 Yeah, this was a really fun. Her whole family came out. The uh, 
Yeah. Kids were there. Her husband was there. Yeah, yeah. I talked to her husband. Her husband's a cinematographer. And then after, after the event, we went down the street and uh, we went to Organic Grill, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, and, there we go. Yeah, there's That's the whole awesome. gang right there, you know? So, I yeah. See Death Cycle right in front. <laughs> yeah, there's Ron Grimaldi from Death Cycle on the left. There's Chris uh, Minucci from uh, Radio Raheem Records on the right, and then Mark, and then me, and then my girlfriend hiding behind me, Larry Kelly, and you were in the back. Yep. You know? Yeah, that, so. always great to see Vlad. Yeah, Vlad was great. Excellent food. Yep. I had, I had the vegan chili with the cornbread. Delicious. The vegan chili, man. Oh, it was great. Some I, had a OG, I had an OG burger. Oh, it was nice. Yeah, it was good, man. He always takes care of us. He's always, always, he's, always great. Yeah. This show, look, come on. Let, let's, let's, yo, know, let, let, let's, let's be frank here. I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for your support and all the patrons and all the sponsors. I'd be out. I wouldn't be available. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this show. I mean, quite simply, you know. Sit. So there you go. Sit. Sit. Is that it? <laughs> Sit. <laughs> sit, sit, yo, sit. That was that was. I got to shout out Larry Kelly and Lori Dawn for uh, Larry swooped me up yesterday uh, to go to the show. We stopped at this liquor store because his friend Kristen was getting a whiskey bottle signed by this Scottish actor. There was like a thousand women at this liquor store online to get this whiskey bottle. Uh, the guy from that show, Outlander, Sam something, but uh, I can't remember his name, but it was fun. So we went, we had a big celebrity day yesterday between Sam and Brooke. You know, man, I don't think I could put my name on, on a whiskey, bro. Well, what are you going to, what, what, what are you going to do? Like a Drew Stone shampoo? <laughs> like a beer, baby? Drew Stone personal lubricant. <laughs> oh, oh, you gonna do lotion? No, not lotion, but like an like like some version oh, okay. of Astro. You know, for people, you know that I would I I think this is something I, I would endorse. Being I buy this shit all the time. Right. Know? And right. and funny enough, it's right at arm's length as I do <laughs> this show. <laughs> I'm sure I just freaked a couple people out with that. But do like yeah. a hot sauce or something, I, you know. I, I, Fuck hot sauce, bro. I'm not, doing, I'm not doing fucking yo. Fuck hot sauce and fuck coffee. How does that sound? Hey, don't take coffee. Don't don't mess I'm with. I'm not. Coffee. But every fucking Jamoke has. Hey, buy my coffee. Buy my hot sauce. You know, fuck out of here. You know what? Fuck you and your coffee, and fuck you and your hot <laughs> sauce. You know. Yeah, buy my fucking lubricant, bro. And I don't Stone. care who. You yo, I don't care who you fucking either. Just buy my shit. All right. Don't lube. Help me help you. That's what it would say right on it. That's right. Help, help me help you. That's it. Yeah, you know, I'm not, you know, you know why I don't like the the, the, the booze thing is like, I, I just wouldn't get comfortable with it. You know, I, I just like. Well, it's, it's got to be something you also partake in. You don't drink, so that would make no sense. Yeah, but it's just there's so much. I don't know. I just I just could never do it, man. I you know. I, How about coffee-flavored hot sauce? Oh. Buy my, Florida, buy my Florida water. Better clean that desk. Yo, it all comes back <laughs> on the desk, and before the show, it all, it all gets pushed off, you know? So Iggy Pop peanut butter, that's a good one. Oh, that is good. Anyway, let's, uh, you know, let's get it on. And it. Uh, I'll talk to you in a bit, man. Absolutely. All right. Well, there you have it. This is the one, the only StreamYard, New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. And we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, Grunge and Grime Soap Company, DTFM Vinyl Distro. Devin is coming on today. It's show and tell. And the one, the only Texas Silver Rush. They were a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. 
They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. The client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers Greg Rolay, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. For information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. DTFM Vinyl Distro, you're not, yo, you're coming on the show today, so you, so you don't need, need me to shout you out. That said, let's bring our guest on. Let's clear the deck. What the heck? Let's do what we do. All right? Don't be, don't be, everybody okay in the chat room? Let me just make sure there's no drama, you know, uh, hardcore fly. Hey, Chris Contos, bro. What's up, man? That, that's good, you know? Um. Let's clear the deck. Let us bring our guest on. Here we go. Today's guest is an American musician hailing from New York City. As a bass player, he is known for his work with the bands MOD, Mind Funk, The Spiders, and Human Waste Project. As a guitarist, Drag Pipe, Handful of Dust, Evil Mothers, and Chemical Waste. Please welcome, coming at us from Coney Island, Brooklyn. Mr. John Monty. Hey, man. What's up, bro? Let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to rumble. <laughs> What's How up, are brother? you, buddy? Good, man. What's up, brother, man? How's Coney Island, man? Uh, it's, well, now that it's cold, getting cold, everything's shut down, but it still rocks. Do you, do you ever go yeah. out like in like the dead of winter and like take a walk on the boardwalk? Oh, all the time. Big time. We yeah, born late at night, usually like even at the end of the summer, like around like September or around now, even now, go and hang out on the lifeguard chairs, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. they start to take them away soon, like completely. So it, mu it must uh, be really it must be spooky late at night in the winter. Yeah, bro, it's definitely spooky. <laughs> There's this one alley you go down, like by the baseball field over there. Yeah, I, yo, I know that alley. I know that, that alley. It's just that long alley that goes to the beach, right? Yeah, I was like about a month ago, I was watching some movie and with, with like Denzel Washington and Mila Jovovich, and it's like they were like playing hookers in that alleyway. There was she was a hooker. I forget the movie. <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro. I go, this movie is going back. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you talk. Go. Yeah. Good, good. Yo, happy birthday to Stigma. Happy birthday to all the people you're saying, you know, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Stigma's I'm not sure. Awesome. I'm not sure who Lockjaw 30 is, but he says, oh, it's JT. JT says, Monty, what's up, brother? What's up, brother, man? What's yeah. going on? Good, good. Hey, so let's uh let's chop it up a little bit. How did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? How did music come into your life? <laughs> um, I grew up as a mob kid. I was a mob kid and uh, my sister turned me on actually. Like I wasn't going like the mob direction wasn't for me. <laughs> um, right. So my sister turned me on to like Kiss. Kiss was the start for me. And uh, you know, then I had Kiss posters all over my wall and this and that, you know, and then I got and turned on to, Iron, to Black Sabbath. You know, Iron Maiden was a huge one for me. Um, you know, and then it just grew from there, you know, and I got my first guitar, started playing guitar, well, then I realized. Say, hold on, when you say you were a mob kid, for those that might not, not pick up on it, you were literally, your dad was Joe Monteleone. He was, he was a Colombo family associate, right? Yeah, yeah, he's in jail for life, yeah. In jail, I mean, in jail for life. In jail for life, yeah, which really sucked, but, you know, that's that, that's that life, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, he, and yeah. He, your dad... Your dad has been in now for over 30 years, right? Yeah, 35 actually. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I give him I give him credit because he's one of those guys he wouldn't rat for anything. You know what I'm saying? They, they dangled everything in front of him. Even like when my grandmother passed and my brother passed, he wanted to go to the funeral, you know, and they offered him stuff if he turned over and he wouldn't do anything. You he's know, a, he's a he's a he's a old school dyed in the wall guy. You know, yeah. I gotta give him. You know, I gotta give him so many props for that. It wouldn't give them shit. You know, yeah, got yeah. you know. But um, honestly, bro, you know, he's in. You know, he's doing. He's in great shape. You know, they gotta take care of you while you're in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but it sucks. You know, it's it just sucks. He's been in there for a really long time now. So. I mean, at 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 that age. 
doesn't age doesn't age come into play a little bit? I mean, don't a lot yeah. of this guy wouldn't he get out? He's like almost eighty, right? Yeah. So that's good. That's happening now. They're working on trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because his health hasn't been the greatest as of lately. Like after the COVID thing, you know, like just recently he had gotten like a small case of like a pneumonia, ammonia and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. That got cured, but there's his lawyers are trying to get that you know the old age and the not healthy that great a thing to get him out so they're working on that so hopefully it all comes into play and he gets out you know so but you know so so when you were growing up when you were growing up that wasn't a life and lifestyle you wanted to get into and you gravitated to music is that safe to say yeah exactly right there wasn't i seen you know my brother there was like we my family my brother was a gangster too so he was like my dad's protege and uh Wow. You know, they was at the police station, this and that, you know, it's like I was always told, like, when I went to school that my father was in construction, you know, so, right. so what your father did, you know, so yep. no, nah, it wasn't the direction I wanted to go, really, you know, I didn't see like a, I didn't see the greatness of it, you know what I'm saying, so, right. Right. Uh, so and- I got it, and music wasn't like it was a plan that I wasn't going to go into it, you know, it's just that I got turned on to music, and I went that direction, you know, so. Yeah. Where did it go? Where, so so, KISS was sort of the gateway, and where, where did it go from there? Yeah, KISS was the gateway. Then it was like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Ozzy, Black Sabbath, you know, went into that direction. And then, you know, played. I started playing. I mean, I, then after KISS posters on my wall, then it was Iron Maiden all over my wall, you know, and it's just – and uh, after that, then it went to like, then I started getting into punk rock, you know, then I started getting into the meat man, uh, started getting into flipper, you know, like old school, punk, old school punk, you know, like, and, uh, and then I just flipper. went that. We, have, we, have, we, haven't heard, we haven't heard that name in a minute, flipper. Man. Right. Flipper. Yeah. And then I got into the plasmatics. I started off, I so went from kiss to the plasmatics. Well, there's, a then, conne- there's kind of a connection there, kiss to yeah, plasmatics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it was also that theatrical thing on stage, you know, which I thought was really cool too, you know. Yeah, yeah. The Mohawks and the get ups, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, and then, you know, doing punk rock bands, you know, that's when I started Chemical Waste. And, uh, well, what happened was I wound up the guitar. I, wound, I was in Catholic school and I was walking to Catholic school. And there was one kid in school who had really long hair, and that was the guitar player, Jason, the kid next to the shaved head kid right there, the blonde kid. Um, Jason Paul, he's my boy, you know, we still, we're still like best of friends. And uh, he was also, I brought him into Mind Funk also. So he was in Chemical Waste, and then I joined them. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I was like, yo, we still stayed friends that whole time. Um, you know, I wound up, when I was in Chemical Waste, I ran into the bass player from MOD at the local music store at Sam Ash. Um, back then, there was hey, no guitar. You know, excuse me, you know who sent me this photo? Who? The singer, Chris. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah, he, sent, awesome. Me, he sent me this one. He, just before the show started, it was, I was looking through my spam mail, and thank God I did. And I get he sent this stuff to me, I guess, through my website. He sent me this one also. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, yeah look, man, I had minor thread on the jacket. I remember on the big on the back of that was a huge, uh, huge chemical waste um patch thing. It was badass that the drummer painted. He was awesome, Bob. Wow. And Chris was awesome. Me and Chris were best buds growing up in high school. Like, we were best, best buddies. We skateboarded everywhere together. And, uh, you know, we were all really tight-knit. Look, Jason actually has a lethal aggression on his arm right there. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Yeah. So, yeah. We used to hang out with those guys. It's funny, yeah, too, because I'm wearing a frost shirt, and, it, and it's, like, weird how things go full circle that the drummer from Celtic Frost would play with us in Mind Funk. <laughs> He also sent me, he sent me a couple flyers, uh, including this one, which funny you should mention, lethal. he sent me two flyers, and including this one, this uh, uh, chemical waste with lethal, with lethal aggression at the right track in, in friggin' Long Island. 
Yeah, dude, the burnt man. I haven't heard of that name in a long time. The That's burnt. awesome. <laughs> We're the burnt. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's old school. That's awesome. I don't even have that. That's badass. Now I yeah, do. That, 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 that's a good one. He sent me yeah. that one, and he sent me he sent me this one here, which is, I guess this is. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, Walter Schreif. Hey, I'm doing I'm doing my show, bro. Can I call you after? <laughs> hey, you, you, you're on the air. I'm doing my show. I'll call you after. All right, bye. That's awesome. <laughs> I love great. motherfuckers True. calling me. Yeah. Like, yo, I'm doing, yo, you know I do the show every Sunday <laughs> afternoon. Like, Walter, why are you calling me, bro? Um, so, so here's another one. Um, and this is from Jersey. It, it, it's the Sportsplex Park Marina in Carlstadt, New Jersey. This is cool. Yeah, it's but, mutual but, aggression and social decay. Yeah, bro, that was the boat shows. We used to have to cross a plank with the equipment to get on this abandoned boat that nobody even, you know, it's like only word oh, of mouth. Oh, on a boat? Yeah, on a, an abandoned boat right by the Meadowlands. <laughs> it's crazy, wow. bro. Yeah, it was wow. nuts. Like, no, we, we, like, tapped into the electricity from the outside, and uh, it was crazy, man, the famous boat shows. Anybody that's been to those knows the famous boat shows, bro. It was crazy. That's wild. I, did, I, did, I didn't crazy. know that. The equipment is awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure who Slap 8899 is, but he says, "What's up, brother?" Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, bro. Uh, oh Camille says, "I was at the boat show." Yeah, yeah. dude, those are classic, man. They're like, and like Rappo, no, yeah. in the middle of a like swamp area is nuts, bro. <laughs> Rappo says, "Epic show, cockroach crawl on the on the glass floor." floor. Yeah, <laughs> cockroach crawl. Nice. So, so. Um, chemical waste is kind of doing you're doing your thing in, in chemical waste for a couple years and playing a lot of local shows. Oh, by the way, wh wh where did you grow up? What high school did you go to? Um, I went, dude. I went to so many different schools. My yeah, family, yeah, yeah, bro. Like I went to I went to school in Brooklyn on 65th Street. Uh -huh. um, then my family, then my mom and dad went their separate ways, and then we went out to Jersey. And I wound up going to like Cliffside Park, Fort Lee, Paramus. I went to wow. like five different high schools. <laughs> I think you beat. I think you beat me, man. I went to. Uh, I went to one, two. I went to three. You beat me. Yeah, I went to a couple of different ones. You know, and I like get thrown out of them, or we would move, or one thing or another. But, um, you know, it was fun. High school was fun. I met Chris, the singer from Chemical Waste, uh, as when we went to high school together. It was awesome. So did you – I'm assuming that from kind of doing the rounds in Chemical Waste, you cross paths with Billy Milano and you end up in MOD? Yeah, well, I ran into the bass player. He worked at Sam Mash in, in Paramus. And uh, me and him, like maybe a couple of years before that, had auditioned with each other trying to put a band together and nothing ever came of it. And then I ran into him and I was in chemical waste. I ran into him at Sam Ash and he was like, I'm playing an MOD now. And at the time, dude, I was like a huge SOD fan, you know, agnostic wow. front fan, uh, crumb suckers. I was huge in those, into those bands. Sure, and he sure. was playing an MOD and I was like, wow, you're an MOD. So he's like, yeah, come down to one of our rehearsals. So I brought a couple of the guys from chemical waste we went down and we all hit it off. The band all hit it off. And we started hanging out with each other. And then what happened was the bass player, uh, Ken Ballone, broke his arm. The, the bass player Ooh. from D broke his arm. And they were getting ready to go on their first tour with Exodus. Wow. And, uh, and they asked, and Billy, me and Billy, wound up, we were hanging out a lot at that point together. Um, he would have these huge parties at his house and uh, right. we were hanging out a lot. We were becoming best of friends. And he was like, why don't you do the tour? And I'm like, yeah, bro, as long as I can promote chemical waste on the tour, you know, and like, you know, I'm like, yeah, that'll be awesome. I'd love to. And, uh, and I wore like a chemical waste shirt every night that I played. <laughs> and uh, it was awesome because all those shows were sold out. It was Exodus's first big headlining tour. Like um, after Bonded by Blood, it was for their oh, second wow. record. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. for their second record. So every show was sold out. 
And it was my first tour, and I was just a hired gun, so it was even better because I didn't have like a headache of a band. I was just a hired gun. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it, it was like definitely the best of both worlds for me. And I stepped, well, I stepped right out of high school into this, you know, so which was awesome. Yeah, and, you know, that, that must, and and MOD was MOB, MOD was operating at a pretty high level at this point, right? Oh yeah, it was, they were huge. You know, it was like right after the SOD records, so it was their first records. Yeah. So that you know, it was like where sod let it off left off you know so it was like my first tour you know it was like it was awesome for me because i went right onto a tour bus you know it wasn't like i did yeah. the whole punk band thing i did that with chemical waste a little bit you know in in new york and jersey and that but you know nothing severe and uh and that was awesome and then we did the mod tour and it was like so much fun you know it was like just had a blast every night it was awesome um, you know, Timmy you was play, great. You play, you played on, you played on gross misconduct, right? And yeah, and you know, I got a photo from um, uh, Chris Boers sent this to me, uh, and uh, I'm sure I, I'm assuming you've never seen this. He sent this to me. It's a shot, I guess. You guys, when you guys were recording upstate, is that what you recorded upstate? Yeah, we recorded at Pyramid Sound. Yeah, yeah that's that, at, uh, I think this, that's is, this is right there. Yeah, that's a pyramid. That's in the. That's everybody does like a famous shot right there. That's like the front door oh. at the Pyramid Sound. Is yeah. that right? Is that right? This is, yeah, the front shot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Chris Boers said this every, picture. Yeah, every great metal record was done at that at that place. You know, like the first Testament records, the first uh, Overkill record. Right. The, like Anthrax's first couple of records were done there, you know. It's like everybody. Alex Perry Alice was the guy back then, you know. Like that's, that's, he was like right. the Rick Rubin back then, you know. He, he that yeah, here he is, Chris Boers. What's up? He says, "What's up, John?" What's up, Ithaca. Bro? Is that right? Yeah. It was in, it, that's right. It was in Ithaca, and yeah. and that's that's where that famous Anthrax story about they were there recording. They didn't have a singer, and that's when they they. They, they ended up with Joey Belladonna because uh, yeah. someone called, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they went to pick him up at the pl at the airport, I think. Yeah. I think uh, for the story I heard was he got off the plane, I think, with like red leather pants on. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I've walked. heard that story, yeah. If you don't ever wear those pants again, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. and, That's then, awesome. and then this one as well, right? Boom. Yeah, that's the that's the surf record. That was like yeah. to introduce the new band. Right. Um, oh, did this know? come first? I'm sorry. Did this, yeah. this came? No, oh, good. this yeah. came first. Yeah, they right. kind of we, right. we recorded them both at the same time. You know what I'm saying? But they got released like that. Got released first as a introduction to the new band, and then uh, you know, and then the gross misconduct record. But none right. of them are as, as the first first MOD record. The first MOD record is awesome. And right. unfortunately, I didn't play on that, but that record, uh, I did that tour, but that record to me is the best one <laughs> that the, I didn't the, play on. <laughs> right, right. That, that, that makes sense. And, th and then how, how, did, um, how did your tenure in MOD kind of come to an end? Or did you just kind of do a couple tours, a couple records, and then wanted to get your own thing happening? Is that it? Well, yeah, basically, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm... I love Bill. Bill, we were total best of friends, you know, and it's just that he didn't really at that time, like he didn't want to go on tour and the whole point and the way to break bands and you got to be on the road, you know, you got to yeah. keep going on the road. And, right. you know, me and the guitar player, we were young enough where we like, yo, we want to go on the road all the time. You know, we just like that to me was the payoff for being in a band was going on the road and playing every night. Like sure. I wasn't really crazy yeah. about the studio. I wasn't yeah. crazy about doing tons of interviews all the time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like the payoff for me was playing live every night. There's no better, sure. higher feeling you get than playing live. Um, so yeah, so he didn't want to do. He didn't want to go on the road all the time. So Johnny Z was like, "Yo, you guys, if you want, put something together. You know, we'll we'll leave you where you're at on your." Uh, you know, on your pay, you know, on your salary, and then you start something new, you know? And Bill was like, yo, you gotta do what you gotta do. He was cool about it, gave us his blessing. And uh, and then 
we wound up going and doing the first mind funk record. Right. And, uh, and yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so go ahead. Yeah. So, so this is, I tell you, man, like I said earlier in the show, it was really enjoyable to go back and listen to the, the mind funk, uh, the first two mind funk records. Um, how did you connect with these guys? I mean, I mean, yeah. one of, let me just let me just say one of the really interesting things about Mind Funk is, uh, you know, the singer Pat Pat Dubar. I mean, I mean, in the hardcore community, every he was the fucking singer for Uniform Choice, you know, yeah. which was like this like legendary West Coast straight edge band, and and then and then he turns up, he turns up in Mind Funk with like long hair. Everyone's like, what the what is this? Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, that was thanks to Mike Gitter, the writer. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, well, we had Johnny Z as our, you know, he was our manager. So, you know, we had a lot of connections of people that we could, you know, get in contact with. And Maria, our publicist, Metal Maria. Metal Maria. Maria Ferrara. Yeah. She, yeah. Uh, she was asking all, uh, like, her friends, like Mike Gitter, like, do you know any good singers? These guys are looking for a singer. And, wow. uh, and he, he's like, yo, check this out. So, dude, we went through so many nightmares before to find a singer. You should have seen some of the Is that stories. Right? That, yeah, dude. Like, you know, it was like, it was like a free-for-all, you know? Like, all, all the people were coming out of the woodwork, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, it was and, crazy. And who, started, and who started the band? You and? It was Vitek, the yeah. guitar player. Right. And, uh we wrote that whole first record, basically like most, like half of it we wrote out of my car because we didn't have a place to live at the time. We were looking for an apartment. We were living out of my car for like two days, three days. And then a good friend of mine, Kelly, um, she, her mom had an apartment and she hooked us up. She was like my sister, you know, she was like a sister to me. And, uh, and she took care of us for a long time. She hooked us up and gave us an apartment. You know, we paid her some, you know, rent that we could afford. And yep. uh, we wrote the whole first record in that thing. And then that's when I brought Jason. I was hanging, Jason was hanging out with us. And I'm like, yo, you want to, would you be interested in coming and playing in Mind Funk with us? And he was like, definitely. Yeah, we'll, so we'll, was, we'll, we'll, we'll get to him, man. He's, a, he's, an, he's an interesting character. But isn't it, isn't it true as legend would have it? Mind Funk got signed out of the rehearsal room, right? Mm -hmm. that, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fucking, that's, that's pretty great. Yeah, that was also thanks to Johnny Z, you know, and the connections, you know. We never even played a live show or anything. We were just, like, getting, putting the songs together, and we were in the rehearsal space. We were at Sounds, Sounds Studios in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Right. And it was funny, too, because right at the last MOD, one of the last, one of the last rehearsals for MOD was at Zounds, and Danzig was rehearsing right next to us. So <laughs> to see Billy Milano and Glenn Danzig outside talking with each other, to me, was like, yo, that's amazing. Right. I wish I got a picture of that because it was pretty cool. Um, cool. But we wound up going to, uh, we wound up rehearsing there at Zounds for a long time, and we actually had uh, Danzig sound guy. Rick was our sound guy. He was awesome. And he was mind funk sound guy also. And uh, so it was cool. Like when we went to California, you know, it was like everybody from Metallica knew him, you know, and he, right. you know, we really knew everybody, you know. And, and and so, but that first mind funk record, uh, that was on Epic, right? That was on Epic. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. That was crazy. We got signed out of a rehearsal studio. Um, Johnny Z just, he hyped the shit out of us. The music was great. The first record was awesome. You know, so the day come down and we do like a showcase for the record labels. And uh, yeah, we got signed with Epic. And it was funny, too, because our first show before we played anywhere, you know, our first live show, like we were talking earlier, was opening up for Faith No More. Wow. Yeah. At the Ritz. Pretty, at the Ritz. At the Ritz. At the old Ritz. Yeah. On Studio yeah. 50, on 54th Street, which is Studio 54. Fifty-four, yeah, right. Which was all. Awesome. Yeah, that yeah, was. Was that, awesome. was that fate? Was that who? Was that faith? No more. Soundgarden. You guys. Who was on? Uh, that no, show? faith. No more. Us and uh, it was faith. No more. Circus of power and us. Yo, I was at that show. I was yeah. At that show. Yeah, That's I was awesome. at faith. No more. Circus of power and you guys at the Ritz. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was cool. That was a great show. Yeah. Yeah, that show was awesome. Plus, I was like, I I love Jim Martin as a guitar player. Ah. That guy's 
them. So it was like a really cool to play with them. It was badass. Yeah, he uh, he's sort of uh, he's sort of out of the game now. You know. Yeah, right, totally. And he looks totally different than he ever did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big time. You know, but uh, him and the drummer were amazing. The guy Puffy, fucking with Mike Borden. That dude's a yeah. great drummer too. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you you brought up um, Jason uh, Ever Everman, right? Yeah, well, uh, he's the second. He's the uh, on the second Mind Funk record. Right, but he's, a, he's Jason an interesting. Jason the first guitar player. Yeah. Oh, um, then we, right. Then when we did Jason. the second, the second sorry, record, yeah. we changed some of the members. Um, so that was kind of strange, you know what I'm saying? And I think personally, the second record is awesome. Um, it's a great record, but I think it's a different record than the first one completely. Right. And I just want to touch on uh, Jason Ever, 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 Everman, right? And right. Who, who was in, here's a shot of him. He was in Nirvana and he was in Soundgarden and then he ended up in Mindfuck with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then he became and then, a Green Beret. <laughs> and then what? And then he became a Green Beret, like in the army. Yo, here's a shot of him, I guess, a while back. He ended up leaving the music business and, and getting heavily involved in, like, black ops. Yeah. Yeah, pretty he, crazy, right? And before, Yo, God, before, God before he was in – yeah, for sure. Before he was in um, Nirvana, he was in, a, he was in a band with my cousin, Alan Dubin. He played – he was in Old, Old Lady Drivers. He was oh, in my shit. cousin's Alan band. Dubin. Alan Dubin's your cousin? Me and Alan, Alan Dubin, Dubin went to high school together. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, in Fort Lee. Me and Alan went to high school together. In Fort Lee, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Alan Dubin's my cousin, bro. That's crazy, man. Alan's awesome. <laughs> Alan's awesome, bro. When I was growing up with Alan, like I would be listening to Ride the Lightning on the first sl and uh, Slayer and Hello Oasis. And he was like, yo, that shit's not heavy enough. <laughs> He's always getting heavier and heavier. He's like, yo, that shit's weak. And I was like, dude, that shit's heavy as hell. And he was like, no, man, that is not heavy. <laughs> Yeah, Alan Dubin <laughs> is my cousin. Yeah, that's and, yo, awesome. And he listens, yo, still, like, I'm like, yo, have you ever heard of so-and-so? He's like, yo, they suck. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is him big time. He would, like, listen to, like, Wormock and stuff like that. He would listen to, like, the heaviest stuff ever. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's great. And, yeah, Dan, yeah, Dan, oh. Hey, Dan, are you, are you involved with Sun at all? Because I know Sun's going out and playing. Uh, they have a bunch of shows booked. And uh, we're, I'm sort of peripherally involved in getting him all those ca Fryet cabinets. That, that, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that said, yeah. Yeah. Old was Old Lady Drivers. They were on, um, they were on Earache. Yeah. 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 That's badass. Yeah. Y'all tell Alan you say hi. Yeah, definitely. He's awesome. Alan's awesome. <laughs> That's ah, great. Dan, you're, you're a fan of Sun. Yeah, I think they're going out and doing like two weeks of shows, right? And they're taking out every – they are taking out out of our storage room uh, every Fryette cabinet that we have. I think they're taking six of our Fryette cabinets. So that said, um, this is the, <clears throat> the second album, right? The one with, uh, yeah, Mind that's the second Funk. one. Yeah, that's yeah. the second record. Memories of yeah. this record? Yeah, I mean the album cover is great. That's all. That was like actually from a painting, but the the girl made it, it was like a piece of artwork that she made out of all stained glass. It was gorgeous. Wow, yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, um, it's a great record. It's awesome. It's just it's completely different than the first one, and the first mm -hmm. one is just it's got a lot of. Um, heart and soul like every record i play on that i've played on i've always put my heart and soul and everything into i put like you know they say oh you put 110 percent. i put like, like 520 percent. you know i put everything into my records right and I, I was my life i loved it you know it's like i put cool. everything i wanted it to be the best it possibly could um that record was just different. I just felt that like when we changed some of the members, we just, when we didn't, like some of us didn't gel as well with each other, you know? It wasn't like, right. no, I had to like, I got, I apologized to Reed, the drummer and to Jason. 
um, because I had to let, you know, we just our differences, we went different directions, you know, and but I feel that we lost the magic when we changed it, even though the second record's a great record and the guys in it are awesome that we play that I played with. It was just, it was different, you know? And, um, and it's a band that you started and it's a band that you ended up walking away from and they went on and did another record after, right? Yeah. You know, and until this day, I haven't actually never even really listened to that whole record. <laughs> right. um, I don't, it's not like an ego thing or anything. I just, you know, I was just, when I wiped my hands of it, when I washed my yeah. hands of it, I was just like, yeah. that's that. You know? It was time to uh, move on. For a new chapter. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, you know, I wish them all the best when they went and did that. You know, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. You know, even though I started that band, me and Louie started that band. And uh, just, you know, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> it's just me and the singer. We were had major differences. And uh, like I said earlier, we, we were on the double decker tour bus in Europe and we couldn't even be on the same level, you know. So I just, I said, I'll play for it. That bad, huh? That bad. So I said, I'll play professionally until the end of the tour. And then when we get back to JFK, I'm out. That's it. Uh, you know, then life hit hard after that because I was on salary and all this stuff. And that just got, you know, taken away. Then <laughs> had nothing. Yeah, it, like it, 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 <laughs> overnight. It, right. It my life, right. right. Yeah. It yeah. went from, having, you know, having it all and having nothing. And I was like, uh, what did I do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But, things, but things, things came back around for you, right? I mean, eventually. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I had to totally make them happen. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. you had to go, yeah. you know, had to go out and smooth and, you know, the whole yeah. thing, you know. Sure, sure. And, uh, but it was rough, you know, it was rough. I like, you know, I think even my, I think even my girlfriend at the time left me for like another rock star or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You know, it, I, I, listen, of, of course, of course she did, bro. Right, right, right. We, would, we wouldn't have it any other way, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, funny. so, yeah. Um, but, you know, shit happened. And then uh, where did I go from from then on? I like I, I was like, I wound up going to Texas for a little while to like clear my head. And I like I love like one of my best bo boys is uh, Fildo from the Skate Nicks. Right. Um, they're from Texas. They're a Texas band. And uh, he took me under his wing for a while. And I lived out in Austin with them for a while. It was awesome. And, uh, you know, luckily I played music with them and stuff and still kept my chops up. And then uh, from then, after that, I wound up coming back to New York. And I'm pretty sure I think that's when I uh, I hooked up with I went out to California a little bit after that. You know, I was hanging out with my friend Barry, who's another amazing human being. And then I wound up coming back, moving with my boy Dean, who's another amazing guy. And we wound up, he wound up uh, letting me live on his couch for a while. And then I wound up hanging out with my boys from Drag Pipe, and we put Drag Pipe together. I see. Before, you know, before, and, we, before we get to that, I guess Slap 8899 is Chris from Chemical is Chris from Chemical Waste. I get it now. He just sent me a picture of him and my cousin, Alan Dubin, there in the middle. Yeah, and, we all went to high school together. That is yeah. fucking great, man. That, Dude, that, that is, is awesome. That is, he, just sent, he just sent that to me. So Yeah, that's that, awesome. I got, you know, Dub, Dubin won't do my show, man, you know? He won't do it? Why not? Oh, yeah, he's he, too he, He's too cool. Yeah, that's not. I don't see him on it. I don't see that yeah, happening. I don't see it happening either, man. You know, yeah. but he still doesn't like change the fact that he's awesome. He is. Alan's awesome. Yo, Alan Dubin. <laughs> Alan Dubin uh, has had a hand in all the films I've done. Uh, uh, who the fuck is that guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Lago, um, the New York Hardcore Chronicles film, and and my new film, The Jews and the Blues. Alan Dubin's involved with all the films I do. He, you know, he, oh, right. he's an editor and a color corrector. And he's, right. I, yeah. I, I, I was talking to this, I was talking to this girl, Avery, and she said she was on one of your films. Um, she's married to Rudy Sarzo's brother. Uh -huh. Um, uh, but, and she wound up turning out to be the girl that left me for another rock star. <laughs> but, uh, she said she was yeah. in one of your films. Yeah. There so, you. um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, you used to write, didn't you used to be work with Paris a lot from the Chromags? Weren't you guys doing Me? a team back oh. then? Yeah, we that's where all the, that's where all those gold records came from. <laughs> right, that's awesome. Paris is the shit. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's where that, that's where all the go that's where all the gold records came from. We had a great run doing music videos in the mid '90s. We did you know five Biohazard yeah. videos and Typo Negative and and Onyx Slam and Run DMC. Yeah. And, yeah. Right, right, right. I was at the Onyx Slam uh, video shoot. That was at fucking uh, the place on Forty Third Street. Yeah. That's not there. The old theater. That place is like right. a, it's like a Broadway playhouse now. The Academy, it was called. The Academy, yeah, yeah, the Academy. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was that was epic. And there's a, a tie in there. there. There's a tie in, and we'll talk about it in the second part of the show. You ended up in a band with Evan Seinfeld from Biohazard, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Evan's awesome too. Evan's the shit. Yeah. yeah. So hey, let me take a sponsor break. And uh, we'll come back in, in a couple of minutes. Relax for a second, and we'll come back. Uh, we'll bring on Devin from uh, DTFM. We'll talk. We'll see what he's got to show us, and, and we'll continue nice. in our quest. All right? We'll see you in a few. Nice, bro. Hey, bro. All right. That's right. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. How about a word from our sponsor? In a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections of music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in a new location on West 3rd Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do and we are happy to see you guys. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go! Skate decks all day, baby! We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops, people love the pops. Star Wars! Star Wars. We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. Oh! Oh! Shit. What's happening? And we're back. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Sunday, Sunday shout out day. Yes, I saw that. Somebody sent a super chat joint. Thank you, RS70. Um, where is that sucker? Here it is. Um, hello, Drew. Greetings from Brazil. Hello, Brazil. I really like your work. Well, thank you. Do you plan to come back with Urban Street Bike? Urban Street Bike Warriors. They're my favorites. You know, funny you should ask. Um, it's something that I, I don't really, I, I, it's very rarely talked about on the show. Um, you know, I, I had a career doing extreme sports films. I did all the urban street bike warrior films. I did nine films in seven years. Uh, it was a big part, big part of my career. It was a very big part of my life uh, for, for many years. And um, there's been talk about me doing an urban street bike warriors reunion show on this show, bringing on some of the, some of the writers that, you know, made those films what they were. You know, we did black sheep squadron and 
You know, I directed the MTV uh, True Life episode, I Live to Ride, and stuff like that. Um, I don't have any plans to to shoot any street bike stuff. I feel like that part of my life is, is sort of over with. But uh, maybe we'll do a, a Urban Street Bike Warriors reunion show here on this show. I think I think that would be that would be really cool. Um, also, I saw somebody mention uh, the Patreon thing. Uh, I've been posting a lot of cool stuff on Patreon recently. A lot of the interviews I've been doing for the new uh, New York Hardcore Chronicles Volume 2 book, 1990 to 1999. Um, Want to shout out latest patrons, Mio TV, Anthony Mio, original biohazard drummer, uh, Courtney's Fellowship of Oddballs, uh, Mike Reed, Susan Anton. And I just saw, just as the, sh- just as the show started, um, somebody came, Chico Felix came on board. Yo, thank you all for supporting the show uh, and and inspiring and enabling me uh, to, to 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 keep doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, no, I didn't shoot BMX. I shot motorcycle stuff. I shot the Urban Street Bike Warriors series. Uh, look them up. You know, uh, a lot of st- a lot. I did uh, all all really radical street motorcycle stuff. Uh, so so there you go. Uh, there's the Patreon. There's the Patreon page. There's a PayPal page. Uh, please support the show. As you saw, this super chat thing. Uh, if you do a super chat and it comes through in color uh, and you have a question, you know, it com- you come right to the front of the line. That question will get asked. It's also a great way to support the show. I also want to mention if you're on Instagram, and I know I'm preaching to the converted here, uh, IG at Stone Films NYC. Please, please follow the show. There's also a merch line that you see. Perhaps you want the New York Hardcore uh, Cup. Uh, there's shirts. There's all kinds of stuff. There's a merch line. I think you see you see it underneath there. And um, if you're watching the show in rerun, there is a um, subscribe button there. So subscribe, subscribe and survive. Subscribe and survive. So so that's so that's that. I want to mention a bunch of a bunch of shows that are coming up. Uh, let's go through, let's go through the tour. Take my hand. Don't be scared. Let's go through the tour of shows that are coming up. Sunday, a week from today, uh, there is no show on Wednesday because we are doing this screening, a uh, film screening, but uh, a week from today, uh, December 11th, David Godless will be on the show. That's going to be very cool. A lot of old punk photos. Wednesday, December 14th, speaking of metal and thrash. Frank White, photographer and Alan Tecchio uh, will be on the show talking about their book, Jersey Metal. Wednesday, December 21st, Matt Warnke from Bold and Crippled Youth, the holiday episode, come one, come all, Sunday, December 25th. We're gonna put the link out there. We're gonna have a lot of people stopping by. It's Christmas day. Come on now, it's about to get serious. Fury of Five, the whole band is coming on the show. First day of 2023, Sunday, January 1st. They have a new single coming out called What Else? This is for your five, War. Wednesday, January 4th, old school Washington, D.C. hardcore represent Rob Moss from Artificial Peace and Government Issue. Wednesday, January 11th, Paul Rossier. Uh, I am co-hosting the show with Joel Gauston. And then Sunday, January 15th, John LaFada, Neglect, Madball, Mind Over Matter, Death Cycle, and The Great Lie. And then Sunday, January 22nd, Brian Harris from Death Before Dishonor will be on the show. Uh, That said, um, yeah, hardcore motorcycle stunts back in the day. First one to put that shit on the map. It's interesting. It's It's something that I never talk about on the show. There's all the urban street bike warriors stuff. I, I got I have to do a, uh, a, a, a urban street bike warrior reunion show here with some of the writers. I'll do like a uh, a side a side trips uh, side trips episode. Um, what else? Um, I think we're cool. Uh, we'll talk. So we'll, we'll do some more some some sponsor shout outs at, at the uh, at the next um, break. But let's bring our, our good friend and supporter from DTFM Vinyl Distro, Mr. Devin Casavant. Hey, man. How's it going, Drew? Oh, it's going. <laughs> I see it's going very well. 
It is. It is. Uh, what's happening in Fargo, North Dakota? Well, it is snowy and slushy, but business has been really, really good. I see you moved into a, a into a a, a a new spot. I have to send you pictures of that new spot. I will email those to you this week. <laughs> you must. Yes, we uh we have arcade games now. We have The Simpsons. Is that right? Yes. Is there is there more foot traffic now in the new place? Tons, tons of it. Good for you, man. I'm I'm happy for you. Let's bring you. um yeah for 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 sure. What um. What do you got? Let's do some show and tell today. All right. So the reason I wanted to do show and tell was I always get asked what's in my collection. So I'm going to start with this one. This Dropkick Murphys. This machine still kills fascists. The lyrics of Woody Guthrie. Now, the reason I brought this one up was this is the first record I ever got in a store that was sold before it even hit the shelves. Just I got three copies and I had customers calling in. Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have it? It's just like, all right, you called it. Just come in and pick it up. So uh, I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm a big Dropkick Murphys fan, and I've always loved the Woody Guthrie stuff that they do. So mm -hmm. I know I'm going to enjoy this record. Got it. So another one here. This was a birthday present. Pennywise Full Circle, the reissue on ghost colored vinyl. So it's like black and white haze. When I originally heard this album when I was like 13 years old, it totally blew me away. And the reason they put so much energy into it was because this was the first album with a new bass player. And the death of Jason really hit that band hard. And you can just tell it in every song. Like, I had never heard an album that fast or that crazy until then when I was 13. And yeah, it just totally blew me away. This next one was a birthday gift to myself. Strung out Blackhawks over Los Angeles. When this came out, uh, great album produced by Matt Hyde, who has worked with Slayer. So imagine a producer working with Strung Out that has worked with Slayer. Result was amazing. They didn't press it on vinyl until now. Because this came out in 2007, so it took 15 years to get on vinyl. So I jumped on that, and I got the collectible color edition because I'm a nerd. I accept that. <laughs> at, at least, all right. At least, now that that's out of the way, it, it, it's kind of a known thing. Yeah. But uh, it's such a great album. It's kind of one of their more overlooked albums, but it's such a great album. Here is a band that I believe is extremely overlooked. The Cobra Skulls from Reno, Nevada. I do not know this band. They are an excellent band. Uh, really great political lyrics. But this was an EP, and it's recently been reissued with two extra songs. Uh, it's called Eagle Eyes. And this got more personal. And you could tell the band was going in a more personal direction. But right after this EP, they recorded a track for a Go-Go's tribute album. And then the singer decided, I'm going to go run the family farm. And that was the end of the Cobra Skulls. Oof. But this last one, this last one's a special treat. Oh, Guns yeah. and Roses, live at CBGB's, acoustic. Hey, let me, you know what? Let me bring, let me bring my, let's bring our guest, John Monthe on. You go, go on about that. Go on. All right. So I acquired this at the Fargo record fair because I was the punk rock guy at the record fair and they put me right across from the guy selling all the heavy metal records. And me and this guy were kind of talking like this. Hey, how's it going? Just back and forth <laughs> for six hours all day. And he was like, Hey, you want to trade some records? So I was like, yeah, sure. What do you got? And I looked in his stack of stuff, found this, traded him two vinyl, dead even on that. And that, that was my uh that was my score of the day. And and nice. that 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 guns and that's that's it. The that guns and roses is the acoustic thing they did at the CBGB's record canteen. Yep. 
I remember that. Monty, Monty, nice, any nice. any early any early Guns N' Roses memories, Monty? Yeah, um, that was the one. Well, I was saying Milano took me to the turned me on to Guns N' Roses as well as he turned me on to the Cult Electric. But he turned me on to Guns N' Roses, and we went to uh, the old Studio Fifty Four at Webster Hall. Rock Hotel, and uh, yeah, yeah. we went to that, and they played. It was like before the the record wasn't even known, really. Like they were just a big band starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I remember at that show, it was like a million hot women. Fucking the place was mobbed. You couldn't. Leave. But Milano, he knew everybody. I guess Slash and those guys, they loved Sod. You know, everybody loved Sod, and. Uh, I remember them, Megadeth, uh, Dave Mustaine came on stage and he was a total mess. I guess he came out to try and play with them. And I remember that their crew had to pull him off the stage, like drag him off the stage and stuff because he was just a mess, I guess. So I just remember them like dragging Dave Mustaine off the stage and the crowd going wild and stuff. <laughs> it was pretty you know, cool. You, you, know, you know what just reminded me? And, and I'm not going to... I'm not going to play the i think i could play the, the intro to it but when you were in mod you guys did this video for true color guys, we're from the record company yeah. we're professionals we know what we're talking about this trash stuff just doesn't work you've got to have it there you are sitting on the left right and that's john yeah. and that's johnny z behind you right yeah and marcia john and marcia right there behind us wow, wow. An image you've got to have a gimmick you've got to do it our way Trust us, we yeah, know what we're yeah, talking about. This is ridiculous. No way. Yeah. That was all Milano's idea. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, make... actually, do you, I mean, I don't know if you remember, but you know who was a cameraman on this? Yeah, Paris and you. I don't know, Paris is on you right. guys. You guys, well, yep, totally. That's when we first, first met, like such a long yep. time ago. Yep, Paris so, Mayhew. Um, Paris Mayhew yeah. was a cam is a camera operator on this. Yeah, Chromax, yep. yeah. It's Paris awesome, dude. It's big time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah so, cool. I know. so there's a little yeah. yeah. You guys Yeah. Good 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 shit, man. It's awesome. So, where where was this? Oh, yeah, where, really cool. This, this live stuff, do you remember where this was shot? Is this Lemoore's? Yeah, that's in uh, New Rochelle at um, that club that was up there. I forget the name of it. Uh, in New Rochelle, Streets? Streets? Streets, yeah. That was at Streets, yeah. That was at Streets, yeah. yeah. Well, this is at the soundstage. This is right. All the goofy stuff with us being another band is at the soundstage in the city. You know what? That's at the Palladium. Right. That's all at the Palladium. All that oh, stuff. Oh wow! The, all Palladium the, on, the Palladium in New York City on Fourteenth Street. Yep, that was all. That's uh, yeah. All that stuff was at the Palladium. Yep. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, and then us like that stuff right there is at Streets. Uh, yeah, because wow. that was an actual show that we played at Streets. Wow. That where all the crowd is and stuff. And then this was the sound. This was the Palladium. That's yeah, great. and that was all Billy. Like, yo, we're going to make fun of all these hair metal bands and stuff. And he comes out. He's like, and Lou, you're going to be Slash. I'm going to come out and knock you out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's great. That's great stuff. I love that. I love that. That was a great tie-in, right, Devin? Between the Guns N' Roses thing. Perfect tie-in, dude. Perfect. <laughs> that, was that, that was great. That was um, awesome. Devin, thanks for coming on. And uh, you, 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 you got to come on more often. Uh, I love when you come on and, and sort of and do a show and tell and and all the best for you and thank you so much for for supporting the show brother love supporting the show love being on it and yes i would love to be on it more often this okay is such well, a fun time i love having you we'll talk to you soon yeah talk take care soon, man bro. there you go you too Jim. later bro there you go yeah that was, that was cool that was a, that was yeah. a cool time yeah, totally. <laughs> we yeah, learned, yeah i learned i learned a couple yeah. things this show one yeah. that you that you went to high school with my cousin you yeah, know, it's awesome. Too. Alan, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Let let's um, let's did did the minister did the, okay okay no I I got I got the I got the I I got the uh, the timeline. Let's talk a little bit about this band. I know out of all your musical musical pros, uh, projects, this is absolutely one of your favorite. Tell us a little bit about how Dragpipe came about and 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 the history of it. 
Yeah, I love this band. These guys are all my boys. Like, you know, we were such a great, we were a family. This was a, one of those, like, the first Mind Funk band, like, the first lineup of Mind Funk. This was the same thing. It was like, we were just, we were best friends. We grew up together. You know, we known each other for years. Everybody played with each other in one band or another. And then we all just came together. We were all, there was like this warehouse where all these bands used to hang out. They would rehearse there, but then on the weekends, everybody would hang out there. And, uh, you know, everybody would just come. Even if you weren't playing music at any time, you would just stop where, where in on the weekends. Where, where this was, was it? This was in uh, West New York on 32nd Street and uh, and Kennedy, right on the corner there. That's Jersey? Um, in Jersey? In Jersey, on, in West New York on 32nd Street okay. and Kennedy Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we then you stop by Friday night, everybody be hanging out. And then, you, either, you know, you just walk into one room, say, what's up? If you want, you pick up a guitar. Every, and it was like, dude, it was like a good, like, 50 rooms in that place and just everybody knew everybody you know it's like one of those things there's a total music community in there and uh and we were we were actually a lot of us um we were in this band called la familia at first with the singer from el nino the old singer from el nino chris yep. um chris uh christian who went on he's now in lions of the gate lions okay. at the gate Right. And uh, and we were all in a band called La Familia together, and then that split up. And then a lot of us we wanted to put in together, we wanted to put in together um, drag pipe. And then it's kind of similar situation as Mind Funk was. We didn't have a singer, and we were trying to find a singer because a singer will make you or break you. I don't care if you're Eddie Van Halen, the singer still will make you or break you. Yeah. And. Uh, so um, some, uh, I think the guitar player, Slick, Richie, he ran into Jason at um, some place he was at, um, some bar or something, and, ran, and he lived in Howell, New Jersey, down South Jersey. He came up and everybody just clicked instantly. Everybody just clicked, you know, and that was another band. We never played out. Never played a show live or anything. Got signed out of a rehearsal room. Um, but that band really, really fucking was the shit. That whole record to me is amazing. We got signed from this one A&R guy. He used to work with Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails, Jeff Anderson. Um, he and, was and, a great... And he, he signed you to Interscope, right? And he signed us to Interscope, yeah. And, big and, time. And, and, and I was listening to the record this week. Fucking record sounds great. And I'm like, that who, produced, awesome. who fucking produced this thing? Dave Sardi, yeah. right? Dave Sardi, yeah. He used to be in Bark Market, and yep. Uh, yep. he was he was like Rick Rick uh, Rubin's protege, um, and he was just a great guy, really great producer. And what was great about that record was he gave me the MVP of the recording that record, which I loved yeah. because that record is one of my favorites. That's and uh, yeah, that record badass. That band should have been huge, like big time huge. It's just that you know, bad timing with the internet came out. Everybody's robbing music, and yeah, yeah, and um, and we wound up getting dropped, you know. So that was that once again. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the time, the timing. I'm yeah, looking timing. for. Is did I see? I'm just looking for a previous uh, post in the show. Oh, here we go. A, uh, uh, hey Adriano, uh, what's up, Drew and John? John used to play in drag pipe with our awesome old drummer and dead blow hammer, Pete Barrera. Right? Yeah, so, Pete's awesome. Yeah, Pete was. Awesome. So Pete, I didn't know. I didn't realize Pete was in. Um, Pete was in dead blow hammer. So, uh, I lost you there. I lost him for a second. Hopefully, he comes back. Right, but uh, but yeah. So that said, I get I get it now. It, it, I get it. Yeah, Pete the drummer was a pro drummer, if I remember with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize he was in. Uh, I didn't realize he was in in, in Dead Blow Hammer. So, so there you go. Come on back, Monty. You, where, come on. You out there? Hello. This could be it. We'll get we'll get him back. It'll take it'll take a second. That said. Um, why don't I take why don't I take advantage of this opportunity? Uh, this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by 
New York Hardcore Comics. Oh, hold on a sec. I think I got him. Hold on. Yo. Hey, what's up? Is that it? All right, keep it plugged in. Come back when you can. I'll do a, I'll do a sponsor break. Uh, yeah. All right, bye. My battery on the phone died. He'll be back in a couple minutes. Let's let's do our other sponsor. Let's do our other sponsor break until he comes back. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. We're sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, DTF and Vinyl Distro, and Grunge and Grime Soap Company. They're a handmade soap and skincare company with a rock and roll spirit based in Nashville, Tennessee. They combine their love for rock music and their love for creating products that are good for your skin and good for your soul. Since 2019, they've been creating high quality, natural handmade soap and skincare products with ethically sourced and sustainable ingredients. They give 10% of their net proceeds to local and community outreach programs. Visit the website at www.grungeandgrime.com and enter the code DREW to get 20% off your first order. Last but certainly not least, come on now, 126, Hard 126 Hardcore Clothing is a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They are, be they are about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126 hardcoreclothing.com. That said, everybody in there, yeah, typical Monty. You know what? We roll with the punches, bro, you know? Um, th thanks for asking uh, about my dad. Um, you know, it's been tough. Um, Arnie went in for um, hip uh, replacement surgery uh, two months ago, uh, you know, and he's, he's, you know, 90 years old, and it just, he hasn't been home. He went from the hospital to the rehab in the hospital to like basically a nursing home uh, rehab type place. And now it looks like he's going into an assisted living place. Um, he's, it's been tough. He's um, not, uh, he can't go home. He can't take care of himself. So uh, we're looking, we got to, we have a place, uh, we have a place. Uh, that he's going into, um, and hopefully he'll settle in there and he'll be able to come back on the show. But, um, you know, nine, 90 years old, 90 years old, and he appreciates all all your good thoughts and everything. I'm going down there a week from Monday. Uh, thank you, everybody. It, he, he's, he, my dad thinks so highly of all you guys in the whole New York hardcore community. Biohazard tour details. <laughs> Listen. The European dates are out there. Um, you know, I think there's 14 European biohazard tour dates. And, uh, you know, it's probably pretty safe to say that you will see them in the States as well. So I'm not at liberty to really speak about it. So, but it's it's a safe bet to, 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 to say that, uh, you know, you, you'll see biohazard, biohazard in the States, you know. Definitely New York City. So so there you go. If, thank you. Thank you for, for asking about my dad. And and uh, it's tough, you know. He's a tough, he's a tough dude, you know. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, from there. Um, what else? Hey, a couple of things going on. Uh, this week, if listen, if you didn't buy tickets for this, you know. You're, you're, you're playing out, you're, you're, you're plumb out of luck. What can I say? Uh, this Wednesday, I am, that was uh, hosting the screening of the At the Matinee uh, film, documentary film. It's an Italian film, uh, and it has its uh, American premiere. This Wednesday at the Nighthawk Cinema, I'm doing the Q&A with Walter Schreifels and, and Olivia Forsyth. I'm sorry if you didn't buy a ticket, it is sold out. Hopefully sometime in the future, there will be other screenings. Um, a week from, actually, no, that's this Saturday. This Saturday, up at the Sawmill Tavern in lovely, scenic, gem of New York State, Ardsley, New York, brought to you by New York Hardcore Comics, is Polyabuse, Damn Your Eyes, 
incendiary device, it's going to jump off tonight. Fire is murder and leeway NYC. Uh, it's a free show. It's at the Sawmill Tavern. Come on up. Uh, we're not playing many shows as we're, we're getting our record, you know, uh, done and mixed. But, you know, there's a couple of them booked and this is one of them. So don't be shy. Let it fly. Uh, opening party December 17th at Senate Tattoo in Soho. It's the New York um, uh, punk exhibit, uh, hardcore art exhibit brought to you by GBT. Leading into the next day is the Holiday Slamboree brought to you by Women of the Pit and GBT. Sunday, December 18th at the Bowery Electric. Free all ages Sunday matinee on the Bowery with uh, faded, faded line, serial poets, concrete ties. Voice of Doom, Dija, Spoiler NYC, featuring Alan Robert from um, Life of Agony, and, and Sworn Enemy. So that's coming up on December 18th. And then, of course, uh, ID, we're playing with Gogo Bordello on uh, one of their new, Murphy's Laws playing one of the shows, and we're playing one of the shows. So uh, this is the one we're playing on Thursday, December 29th. Tickets are on sale now. You know, we're psyched. Uh, another show we're playing while we're doing the record. Couldn't turn this one down, right? Uh, Brooklyn Bowl. And then um, recently announced Sunday, February 12th at the Bowery Electric, another one of our free New York Hardcore Chronicles uh, Back to the New York Hardcore Roots series. Uh, with Shutdown, Kings Never Die, Incendiary Device, once again, it's going to jump off tonight. End of Hope and India Vid. So all that is going down. Um, yeah, three shows. Murphy's Law is playing New Year's Eve. Uh, Gogo Bardello is doing a three-show run at Brooklyn Bowl, which is literally a bowling alley where live bands play. Um, we're playing the first night. We're playing the 29th. Murphy's Law is playing... New Year's Eve. So um, is that right? The headphones is clicking on the necklace. Okay, I'm going to take the necklace off. Thanks for the heads up. Get that off. Let me get that off. Sleepy. You are getting sleepy. Um, what else we got? Uh, who's on for show 250? I'm on it. I can't talk about it now. It's not, but there's, it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, Mad Ball next weekend. That's right. Mad Ball. Yep. Yep. And Victoria. Yes, we will see you. We'll see up. We'll see you up there. Um, yeah. So that said, uh, all that, all that and more. Um, hey, Joe Romini, there he is. is. Is that just coincidence, Joe, that I was just waving this around? This, by the way, uh, 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 put together by our sponsor. Uh, this is a agnostic front silver uh, necklace that Joe Joe uh, uh, sent me as, as a gift. Uh, Joe Romini, Vinny Stigma's, Vinny Stigma's cousin. You are getting sleepy. Uh, how are you, Joe? You got to come on the show, man. It's been a minute. We want to hear what's going on down, you know, down in Fredericksburg, Texas. You know? Yeah, buddy. Good to see you, and Joe, thank you so much, man. You're one of the first supporters that came on board with this show, and 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 uh, I'm just I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody that 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 supports this show, man. I, I do, I, I really do. I'm very, very, very fortunate. And uh, there it is again. There's the Patreon page, and uh, hey, two dollars, five dollars, uh, support the show, so I, so I can continue to really stay focused on this, you know. Uh, it takes an incredible amount of focus to do this show. It really does. I do a lot of homework. It's not by accident. It's not like stepping in a pile of dog whoops. A lot of work goes into this sucker. Um, Nobby Bones for two fifty. Is that right? I I think I think you know. You know what, Joe Romini? Uh, uh, what Joe's referencing here is Joe's friends with uh, Greg Rollet, uh from Journey in Santana. And yes, I saw that Greg is back uh, with Journey doing the 50th anniversary tour. We got to get Greg on the show. I, I really like that, you know? You know, thank you. We're lucky to have to do, yes. I'm not sure. We're lucky to have to do this, Drew. Okay. I think that's a compliment in there somewhere. Thank you. 
I, I appreciate it. Um, John Monty, where are you? Hang in there. John Monty will be back. Um, what else? Uh, Elvira. Elvira would be a rat, you know. What's up, Danny? Good to see you when I was in uh when I was in Scottsdale, man. That was nice. Thanks for thanks for taking us out. You know, I gotta make I gotta make some new t-shirts. Um uh, I gotta make some some new New York car. There, there's uh, look on the merch line. Uh there's a couple of New York Hardcore Chronicles live t-shirts or or incendiary device t-shirts, but you know, we're getting it going. Um Shout out to the Cockney Rejects who were brilliant in Edinburgh last night. Okay. Right on. I saw John Monty just tried to uh, log on and then disappeared again. So that might be it. We might just have to be freestyling it, which, which used to cause a lot of stress. Like, oh, my God. Now it's like, yeah, whatever. Hey, what do you want to talk about? You know? We could talk about anything. From, you know, from this to that. You should get Alan Dubin on the show eventually. I'm sure. Yo, Alan Dubin, my cousin Alan Dubin, he won't come on the show. He's not that kind of guy. He, he you know, those, those, those like, you know, maybe I'll try again, you know. Yep. I'll, I'll try. I'll try again with Dubin. If you know Dubin, reach out to him and tell him you should come on your fucking cousin's show, bro. What the fuck? You know, I'll tell him fucking we were railing on. We were railing on you on the show today, Dubin. You know, wow. Another new, uh, hey, I got to shout out a new patron that just came on. Sam C. Just Sam C. Welcome, brother. Thank you so much, man. And uh, and also uh, Chico Felix uh, came on uh, previously. And then I want to shout out Mio and Courtney's Fellowship of Oddballs, Mike Reed and Susan Anton. Thank you so much. Um, what are you talking about, bro? Paris Mayhew already, Paris Mayhew already did the show. Evan Seinfeld already did the show. Or I guess those are guys I said would never do the show. And, 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 and Paris, Paris did the show, you know? So that said, you know, we'll see. Um, I see Monty's trying to sign, sign on. We'll see what happens. If that really, if that really happens, back. Hey, he's, hey, the the Lord of Darkness is back. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. I, no, hang on, let me turn the light on. Hold on a second. Yeah, t- wait, wait, t- turn some lights on there, fucking Nosferatu, huh? Yeah. Wow, that's better, right? <laughs> a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry about know. that. We were having a great conversation. I wasn't paying attention to the batteries. Life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let, let's let's do let's do um, let's do a couple of questions while we're at it. You know, um, uh, yes, Chris please. Spikey asks, can, "Can Monty speak? How did the old school hardcore dudes react when the metal crossover thing came about?" Miami, he says, "Miami yeah. was a shit show." Like. Like you were kind of in the middle of that. What was what? What was your perspective on it? In the beginning, if in the beginning of it, it didn't really click. You know what I'm saying? The skinheads yeah. would beat up the long hairs. You yeah, know what right. I'm saying? It wasn't like peaceful right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? But mm. then, as the crossover started getting bigger and bigger, you know what I'm saying? It was like. Then it started to gel, you know. Then like people would go see the Chromags and the skinheads and the long hairs go yeah. see the uh, the Chromags, go see the crumb suckers and yeah. SOD, you know, everything crossing over. So everybody's starting to get along with, but there was still like a lot of craziness in the pits, you know what I'm saying? People yeah. were getting hurt, you know, at the very beginning. Yeah. But I'll tell you what though, we had a scene back then, you know, like there is no scene today. You know, it's well, like whoa, back then, whoa, like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> not like there was anyway <laughs> well listen things change man but there is there is a scene today man and and uh it, it's out yeah, there no, right. there is a scene it's just back then it was like there was bleaker bars where you can get music you know it's yeah. like i guess now there is a scene. i guess i just don't go out as much as i used to now, so it's not me there you go <laughs> so yeah there i'm sure go. there is probably 
I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Polly Pork Chops asks, hey, John, can you tell us a crazy Billy Milano story? Uh, crazy Billy Milano story. There's a lot of them, bro. Um, hmm, let me see. Crazy Billy Milano story. Uh, oh, yeah, all right. I got a good one. I got a good one. At the Mega Force, the Mega Force fifth anniversary party, which was awesome, was at the Ritz, was at the old Ritz at the at Webster Hall, you know, at the Studio 54. It was awesome. Every band was there. It was like he had every band that he ever had on his label there, you know what I'm saying? SOD, Anthrax, Overkill, Testament. Everybody was there. Alice Cooper was there. Again, James Hetfield came by. You know what I'm saying? It was really awesome. Um, it was really, really, it was packed with all superstars, this and that. And uh, Alice Cooper used to have that really big guitar player guy, uh, Kane Roberts. The guy yeah, was all yeah, muscle yeah. built. We you know what I'm saying? Guy. Yeah, good dude. Good dude. Uh, he's hanging out in a circle with all these other famous rock stars. And I'm, I'm there, with, and I come walking in. Billy's there talking to him, to Kane Roberts. And he goes, uh, he goes to me, he goes, hey, Kane, to the, to the guitar player, he goes, this guy said he's going to beat you up to me. He goes, he goes, yo, this guy said he's going to beat you up. And I was like, yo, I go, dude, he's joking, he's joking. And then Kane Roberts picks up Milano <laughs> with one arm around, like gives him a hug around his waist and picks him up, like with one arm. I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. And Milano starts screaming like a little bitch, just joking around, <laughs> has his hands in the air, flying like a little girl. And then he runs over, and it's me. Um, now I'm standing with me, the drummer from DRI, Felix, and Debbie Abono. I don't know if you remember her. She was a manager yeah, from back in the day. Of course. Got ready to call. She was awesome. Yeah. And, he, and then Milano, the show, Kane Roberts, what's up? He picks up the three of us. In both his arms, like all together, just picks the three of us up. Milano is showing Kane Roberts that, you know, I can do what you're doing. You know, I was like, damn, it was great. I think there's a picture of that somewhere. I might I have think, it somewhere on my photo well, album. I think, I think Kane Roberts is back playing with Alice Cooper again. Oh, yeah, nice. But I, I yeah, think, that's, I, I, that was I a think great he is. story. Yeah, 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 that was an awesome time. So, so here's 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 a good here, here's a good one, and and this kind of segues into it. Uh, in two thousand, uh, in about two thousand four, you joined Ministry. Uh, My, Michael uh, Laroche asks, Ministry was the loudest show I've ever been to. Can you tell me if this was done intentionally? Two thousand and four Worcester Palladium, if I remember right, the back line was pushed to the front of the stage. Yeah, I think, the, I think honestly, bro, I think because we were all deaf, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, from playing music for so long in our lives that the, that because he had to have it as loud as ever, Al. And right. uh, a lot of it was before they had in-ear monitors. So right. we would play off the monitor on the ground big time. So right. um, we would crank, you know, as loud as yeah. could be, you know. Our whole goal was if it's not as loud as Motorhead, then it's just not loud. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, and big time. But I've always like I always wanted to play with ministry. That was like I always wanted to play an MO an SOD. So when mm -hmm. MOD came about and I had the chance to, I was like, I'm gonna do it. That's kind of why I left uh, Chemical Waste, because I got the opportunity with MOD or else, you know, Chemical Waste how, was a how great did, band. How did the uh, how did the ministry opportunity come about? Um, a drag pipe had just broken up because of the, of the being dropped and everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, everybody kind of just went their separate ways. And I was really good friends with Mike Skasha, God rest his soul. And, uh, we and him were talking. I was working at Fly Right Studios at the time at the tattoo shop in Williamsburg. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that right? Yeah. Elio Espano is my boy and he owned it at the time. And, yeah. uh. Oh, Elio, he did. Uh, he did Roger from Agnostics Tattoos. He of did course, everybody. He I, was awesome. I, of course, the, the tattoo shops owned by his protege Stephen Yui now. Yeah, yeah. So Elio like was the man, and he had he was cool. You know, we wrote we were brothers, and uh, he hooked me up with a job there, like fucking you know making the appointments and taking care sure. of their spaces and shit like that. Sure, sure. And I remember because I got a call from Mikey Scotia while I was there from Ministry. And he called, I called him, left a message, he called me back, and we were playing phone tag, but I remember the guys in, I walked in to fly right one day, they're like, yo, Mike from Ministry just called you. 
So I called him up. He's like, bro, why don't you fly out to Texas, man? Paul Barker just left. We're looking for a bass player. Come wow. out, man. Have you come out and try out. And, uh, of course, I had to pay my own way <laughs> to get there. <laughs> Uh, so I asked a friend of mine to lend me some money to get out there, um, my boy Danny. And uh, he lent me some money, and I went out there, and I was like, I always wanted to play with them. I had gotten offered, we were going to, I was going to start playing with them on Filth Pig before that. Um, we had talked about playing together, but I think me and Al and Mikey and a lot of us, we were all really fucked up on drugs at the time. You know what I'm saying? So we were like, yo, now's not a good time. We're all trying to get this shit out of our lives and this and that. So now then wasn't the time to do it. So then. Yeah. J uh -huh. JMA says, and a crazy drug, any crazy drug related ministry stories? Yeah, you're hearing one. I interviewed, hey. God <laughs> I inter I interviewed Godflesh in 97 in Paris, and we couldn't do the interview in the venue because in the venue because ministry were doing too much drugs. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Ha. yeah ha, ha. About right. It'll probably be the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, and anyway, I got a chance to go out there and they were doing song, they were doing houses. They were in the middle of recording houses of the Moly and they played me some of the tracks and I was blown away by it. it was, that record's a really great fucking record. Um, did it get its due? And but that record is fucking awesome. There's so many good songs on that record. It's unbelievable. And I, he's like, you want to you want to play on a couple of rec on a couple of songs? And I was like, dude, it'd be my fucking honor. Mm. And he's like, uh, come up to he's like, come up with the bass part. And he had the drummer play this one drum thing. And I did it. They and he loves it. And I was in the band from then on. And uh, that record is awesome. It was like them, them kind of doing a Psalm 69 part two, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, they were trying to go back to that, you know, which had made them. And uh, in my eyes, I mean, in the public eyes, which had made them, to me, there was lots of better record. But, you know, it's a great record. And, uh, yeah, that record's awesome. And I got in the band. We were doing great for a, a while. And... Uh, we were in the middle of El, El Paso and it was like, it was just starting to get to us because we were there for just too long. You know, it's like yeah. starting to eat away at our minds. And uh, I know Al was like uh, just in the beginning of about to start going through a divorce. And it just, it was just uh, turned out to a nightmare. You know, I wound up going back into fucking getting fucked up and that just yeah. like, you know, and then the other guy started getting a little fucked up, and before you know it, it's just before, like every before you know it, the the, car, the house of cards collapsed, right? Exactly. So, yeah. But um, but I was honored to be in that band. I always wanted to be in that band. That's awesome. Um, when you're in that band, you're a total pirate, and it's like just to go to that band, we're all pirates already, and uh, wow. you know that was a pirate ship for sure. <laughs> Is that right? Lewis from MOD was in Mind Funk and Ministry too. He's the one who introduced me to all of them. That's yeah. that could be it. That could be it. Probably his battery. Probably his battery died again. Let's see. Hello, hello. That could be it. Funny, because I was just about just about to ask him about playing in the spiders with Evan Seinfeld. How about that? I was just about to ask him, hey, you were in the spiders with Evan Seinfeld. You know? So yeah, that could be it. We'll see. He'll probably call he'll probably call me again. Listen, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, right? So come on. That said, um, here, I'll answer all those questions. What's your favorite record you recorded? Um, I'd say uh, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just being silly. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But that could be it. Um, but, hey, we, we, were just, we were just getting some traction, right? Hey, if that's all we got, it was a great show, right? So that said. Um, what else? I've kind of said I've kind of said my piece, you know. I've said my piece. 
Did you see? Come on now. Did you see the picture of me at, from last night with? With the amazing Brooke Smith and the incredibly talented Mary Louise Parker from Weeds. Anybody watch Weeds? It was kind of a pretty cool show that she did. Yeah. Good one. Uh, that said, I'm sure my phone will be ringing any second. Um, what else? Uh, the Mind Funk debut was amazing. Back to it was great. Yo, I've been listening to it, getting ready for the show. That first Mind Funk record is great. Really great musicianship. It's a great record, man. Really, 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 really great record. Yeah, Al Jorgensen stole his batteries just as he was about to like, we were so drugged out. We were in El Paso. You know, we were fucking, we ran out of Coke and fucking, that was it. Ministry collapsed. You know? Yep. Yep. Hey, Paul Stone, how are you, buddy? Are you coming back to New York anytime soon? Hey, it's freestyle time. What do you got? Let's do it. What's up, Paul? When are you coming back to New York? You going to come back to New York and sing a song with me or what? You know, where's the picture of the Iron Maiden cake? You know, there, 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 there was pictures of it. Um, did I take a picture of the Iron Maiden cake? I don't think I did. Wait, let me look. I might have. Let me see. I did. I took a picture of the Iron Maiden cake. Stand by. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let, me, uh, let me go through the process and send it to myself. I fucking took a picture of the Iron Maiden cake last night. Fucking A. Here we go. This is a fucking cake. This cake was huge. I'm telling you. It might not look big in this picture, but the fucking thing was like, it fed like, the Iron Maiden cake fed like fucking 70 people. Um, hold on. Here we go. Iron Maiden cake coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, by popular demand, the Iron Maiden cake from last night. There was like, I'll just, just to, just to set it up a little bit. There was a, um, a new wave of British heavy metal book release before we went in and did Brooks book release. Sadly, there was like under 10 people there for it. And they got this huge fucking cake. Get a load of this motherfucker. Bam. There it is. There's the Iron Maiden cake from yesterday. You know? Nice cake, right? I'm telling you, it was like, it was you, it was fucking fed like a fucking thousand people. Loving this today? All the shows have been good, Teresa. You know? Nice cake, right? Yep. What else? Anybody else? Anybody need any anybody need any advice in their love life, perhaps, or you know, anything like that? Um, because I'm giving out free advice today. Um Mind Funk were great live. Mind Funk were great live. We were busting Dubar's nuts about drinking Budweiser. I'm hoping to get back if I can get some art in the next GBT show. Shh, the wife will kill me. All right. Hey. Is that right? Was Pat Dubar drinking? Did he give up that straight edge thing? That straight edge thing? Drew, what have you been listening to these days? Bro, whoever's on the show is what I'm listening to. Honestly, the show, you know, whoever is coming up next on the show is what is what I do my homework and listen to. For instance, you know, I had, you know, we have Monty coming on today. So I had to do a deep dive into into uh, mind funk and um, uh, Emma and, and, and MOD and um, you know basically you know whatever's coming up you know and then you know when I drive the car I like listen to the Grateful Dead um, and you gotta understand I'm also in a band so I'm getting bombarded with that shit and we're recording a record. And then I'm doing shows, so I'm hearing all that. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's never like, hey, let me put on some music. It's like I'm constantly getting pummeled by music. So, you know, that, that's a good question. Um, no, I haven't, uh, Jason, good question. Haven't had anybody from Super Touch on the show. I'm not sure if Mark the Singer is internet savvy. Um, but um, what's his name, um, uh, who's in Pembroke now, 
uh, he was going to play one of the Bowery Electric shows. Um, John uh, John Bivano, am I am I getting it? Yeah, uh, but no, I have not had any any super touch, any super touch. Um, get Pat Dubar on the show. Love Unifor choice. A story, Lou. Yo, I think like Monty just said, I think Pat Dubar is like a recluse now. I, I don't I don't think I don't think um, Pat Dubar is like in the public eye. He's like Chuck Biscuits. Uh, he, he, I'd I'd love to have him on the show. Um, you know. So that said, uh, when's, in, when's the incendiary device record coming out? <sighs> Dude, the way things are now with the press, pressing plants and everything, um, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully sooner than later. I, I can't even like speculate. The record's being mixed now. Um, you know, big sound, a uh, guy that, uh, that, that uh, does Lama God and Devil Wears Prada and El Nino. Um, is uh, Dan um, is is mixing it? A couple people have heard one of the first mixes. Big, big, big mix, big sound on the Incendiary Device record. So uh, I'm about to be a recluse. Rap Bones, Rap Bones says he's stepping away from the spotlight from from social media. But but I'm I'm grateful that he's coming on the uh, Rap Bones is coming on the holiday episode. He says that's his last, his last, uh, appearance. So get, get ready. Um, yeah, you're right. I bet Mike Gitter knows up with, you know, with Pat. I'll reach out by the way. Um, uh, Monty's been trying to sign back on, but I think his phone's pretty much dead and, uh, it's almost dinner time anyway. Um, my most listened to song on Spotify was I know you writer. <laughs> from the Grateful Dead. You know what? You want to see something funny? I wasn't even I wasn't even going to put this on social media cuz this shit's so corny. Wait, where is it? Here, you know how you do those Spotify those Spotify things? Um which is the all-time oh, 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 Hold on. Hold on. Monty's calling me. You see. Bro, what's up? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. And this, my phone needs time to tr to charge up. All right, hey, saying. hey, you're you're on the show. Say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, man. Happy holidays to everyone. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. My phone. I forgot to look at the battery. Sorry, brother. I was getting so engulfed in the convo. Thank you. you know, Thank you. For have a great holiday, man. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you around. I got a chemical waste thing coming out soon. Um, just check it out. Go to my email and. Uh, you got that right you can post yep. it up whatever absolutely thank right, you yeah, thank you for lot, brother, thank man. you for coming on the show it was great oh, my pleasure man totally drew you're awesome bro thank you, know, you you need to put your book out man totally you're i will i will yourself man you know what i'm saying which is awesome all right i'll talk uh, to you soon thank monty you thank you having me yep yeah and uh out to everybody again you know happy holidays to everybody man and uh drew we'll talk man i'll see you we'll go to some show together one night absolutely buddy i'll, I'll be in all touch right, brother, all right have a good one thank, thank you, you bye. hey listen we make you know we roll with the punch alberil what's up man uh rap Bones must be heading up north to the left yeah you know rap Bones, you know he's got to step away from social media you know he's 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 the spotlight, hey, the spot shines. The spotlight shines bright. You know, there's a lot of heat. Where there's light, there's heat. Um, I'm sorry, Chucky. You know, I had I had pictures too. I still had some pictures. I wanted to ask him about his uh, his playing card, right? His his mod. Look, yeah. You know, remember when there was cards? Anybody remember these cards? It was like I think Harley had one. I think I have the Harley card somewhere. Let me find that. Yeah, here it is. Here's the Harley card. Hold on. Let me, let me, I, I found the MOD card, but let me find the, uh, let me, let me, let me post the Harley card. Hold on. Harley card. Here you go. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to my room. Uh, yeah. Remember, remember these cards, anybody? Remember these cards? What are they called? Superstars, music cards. Fucking Harley got a fucking card, you know? Yeah, man. A lot of people. You know what was a good one? Uh, the, there was a, a Brian Bajunkyard card. Yep. 
Yep, it was a Harley card. So there you go. Go figure. So I was going to, I was going to, this is, I think, you know that Spotify thing that everyone's been doing? I like, did, I, I did one. I'm not posting it because I don't need to, but I'll post it here just for a laugh. I guess this is like my all time, could this be my all time Spotify like thing? Here, you wonder what I'm listening to on Spotify? Here you go. Grateful Dead, Allman Brothers, The Exploited, Biohazard Misfits, Jimi Hendrix. What else is on here? Blue Oyster Cult. You know why, you know why Blue, Blue Oyster Cult gets listened to a lot? Does anybody know why Blue Oyster Cult, if you've listened to his past shows, why Blue Oyster Cult gets listened to so much in this apartment? Um, the Exploited. I got on some Exploited shit a while back. Cro-Mags, Bad Religion, Jefferson Airplane, Frank Zappa, Deep Purple, Jefferson Starship, White Snake, Hot Tuna. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This is like, I can't post this. People be like, what the fuck? Uh, Drew Stone, Grateful Dead. Yep. Yeah, it's Chaka. Yeah. Cowbells, right? That said, yeah, we we built this city on rock and roll. So yeah, uh, Blue Rush the Coke gets listened to a lot around here because, you know, how do I put how do I put it mildly? You know, when we get naked around here, we put on Blue Oyster Cult. All right, Alba Real, what you know? How's the Boston sports scene these days, Al? How are the Patriots doing? How are the Bruins doing? Fucking Rangers. Yo, Rangers are a big disappointment this year. Hockey's the only sport that I that I like anymore, you know? Listen, bro, you want to go deep purple, bro? I'll go deep purple with you, man. You know, I've been listening to all the records with Coverdale singing. Like, I, I almost don't give a fuck about that other Deep Purple shit. I fuck with Deep Purple on the Coverdale shit. Come Taste the Band with Tommy Bolin, Stormbringer, and Burn. That's my shit right there. I can't even give a fuck about Deep Purple with Ian Gillen. I'm, I'm all about David Coverdale. Um, there you go. Uh, too much info. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm burning for you. has a whole new meaning. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah. There you go. Love you. Listen, you love Jefferson Airplane. I got news for you, man. You don't love Jefferson Airplane as much as I do. Um, I'm probably in deep trouble. My girlfriend's probably watching this on the way over here now. She's be like, don't talk about, rah, 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 you know. Yeah. Yep. Child in time. Yep. I love that stuff, man. Rangers have been awful. A story, Lou, big Ranger fan. Rangers have been awful. They lost last night to Chicago. Rangers are a big disappointment. They went with this big youth movement thing, and it hasn't panned out. You know, it just hasn't panned out. Not for nothing, but Grateful Dead, top of your list, your music credibility is compromised. You, you, you know what it is, man? I listen to so much heavy and hard stuff all the time. To me, it's like it's like Grateful Dead's like background jazz. It's like you know oh what about the days listening to southern rock in the bronx that's a great story right crazy right where i grew up in the bronx and i went to i went to kennedy high school public high school in the bronx everybody loves southern rock and i'm not talking like the white kids everybody loves southern rock at, at kennedy high school like the, the the puerto rican kids the black kids we all hung out together we love southern rock it was, it's the craziest thing, right? I, I I wrote about that in my book, my ongo the book that I'm working on that'll be going on for a while. Uh, my my uh, self uh, my my uh, autobiography, but it was a crazy thing, like Southern rock. Like I'm talking like deep dive on Southern rock, like Marshall Tucker Band, the Outlaws. You know, like crazy. Hey, Courtney, what's up? What do you say? 
Molly Hatchet. Yo, we love that shit, man. We, yo, we love that. Charlie Daniels band. And we're hanging out in a park drinking like 40s and, and, and you know, we like, you know, in, 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 you, in, in Ewan Park in fucking in, in the Bronx, you know? So go, go, go figure on that. Um, that said, uh, any other questions? We got a couple of minutes. Uh, ask anything. Let it fly. And, uh, you know, that, that, you know what? I think, I think you really, I think that's, I think you hit it on the head right here. Sometimes you got to listen to music that's not screaming at you. And, and that, that's what it is with me. Uh, and I think the Grateful Dead and Jefferson Airplane and Hot Tuna. It's, it's like, it, 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 it's not screaming at me. I got enough screaming at me. Like, I can't listen to, especially when I drive. I can't listen to music that's screaming at me when I drive. I can't do it. I, I can't do it. It freaks me out. Um, I've heard that about the Ian Gillen solo records. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with them, but I hear they're really, really great. Devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. You know, listen, I'm not mad at Pink Floyd. I like Pink Floyd, especially the early stuff, the Sid Barrett stuff. I love the Sid Barrett stuff. You know, the, the real early, you know, Echoes. I know that's after Sid Barrett, but, you know, I'm a big, big fan of early Pink Floyd stuff. I, I like that. And, yo, nothing for nothing but that new remastered, uh, remixed version of Animals that just came out is really great. If you're a big Pink Floyd fan, if you're a big Pink Floyd fan and you love Animals and you know it really well, pick up the, the, uh, the remix. You'll hear things in there that it really, it's really done well. It's really, really great. Uh, that new Animals remix. I listen to that in the car and it's like, and I love that record. And I know it, you know, backwards and forwards. And I love when they do these kind of, you know, remixes and you're hearing, oh, wow. You know, they play up this instead of that. It, re really, really good. Yes, yeah, see Emily play. Yep, absolutely. How about, get, how about getting Keith Morris on the show? You know, what's up, RS? You know, I was very close to getting Keith Morris on the show, uh, but I, I was going through his, um, you know, he had like a, 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 a PR person, a press agent, and uh, they just, they just didn't, they didn't make it happen. So I might revisit that at some point. Um, Born Again. Oof. Yeah. That's a record that, that Sabbath record Born Again that Gillen sang on. That's a record that God forbid they should find the original tapes and remix that. I bet it would sound great because that mix on that is kind of, kind of horrible. Um, you know, so that said, did I hear the new Metallica song? Yes, I did. And I liked it very much. I thought it was great. I liked the new Metallica song a lot. And it was like, oh, you know, oh, it sounds like, yo, the new Metallica song is great. Shut the fuck up. You know, fuck the people bitch about Metallica, no matter what they do. That new Metallica song is great. What the fuck do you, what the fuck else do you want from Metallica? You know, Jesus. John Brandon, I talked to. John Brandon from Negative Approach will come on the show. Uh, we'll, 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 it'll happen. That, that's going to happen. Um, you know, uh, it's good. I like it, man. I'm not, yeah. listen, I'm impartial to Metallica. I like the Metallica guys. You know, they, they were in my film, I'm friends with them. Like, I, you know, I like, I like, I'm not, I'm not here to shit on Metallica, you know? Um, yes. As a matter of fact, we're going to, we're going to continue the 10 question series. Um, I just did, uh, a, 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 it just got a very, uh, really great response. Um, I just did Creature from Rebelmatic and, um, I just did, um, Steve Gallo. From killer, you know what? Also, while while I was while I was doing that, I don't know if you guys saw this. Um, that while I was digging into the ten questions series, I found an old episode of the New York Hardcore Chronicles film that was never released about the A seven. That's on that's on YouTube now. It's called um, A seven Ground Zero New York Hardcore. It's, it's a segment from the New York Hardcore Chronicles film that I abandoned and I went in a different direction. 
but I found it and I cleaned it up and I just put it out. It's on YouTube. It's 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 pretty damn good. Jesse's in it. Jimmy G's in it. Um, Steve Poss, rest in pieces, in it. Uh, ch check it out. Did you film the Sepultura video? Of course I did. Everything on my channel is mine, bro. Absolutely. And I have tons of that stuff. I got. I have Pantera, Sepultura. Forget the Biohazards. I got tons of that stuff. But yeah, I I, I put up that stuff. That's my. I shot that. Yeah. From the stage a good guest would be jennifer finch from from l7 yeah i should reach out to jen that she'll be good for sure absolutely you know alec mckay um just played the other night here in new york um on friday night and uh astoria lou and i were talking about going but uh, alec mckay would be cool um you know as far, Tim, as far as music goes, everything keeps everything interesting. It keeps the burnout factor down. Not sure what that means, but yeah. Um, yeah, we had Sammy on. Yeah. Sammy's great. You know, you know I like Sammy a, a lot. Uh, we've played a lot. We just played with them out west. Um, I'm a big fan of Sammy um, and Fang. And we've played with them like, I think we've played with them five times in the past, what, year or so. Yeah. Um, Pantera, killing it with Zach and Charlie. A few videos like, you know what? Good for them. Good for Zach. Good for Charlie. Good for Phil. You know, good for Rex. It's a celebration of the music. I heard it. It sounds great. You know, stop fucking people. Ooh. It's like, you know, shut the fuck up, man. The Pantera shit sounds great. Let them go play the music. People want, want to hear it. Good for them, you know? Um, yeah, leaving would be great. Leaving would be great. I, I, I got to, I got, you know, certain people, you know, you have to go through their, um, you have to, you have to go through their, um, their, their agent and stuff. You know, certain people I have access to, certain people like Ice-T, Henry, you know, Henry Rollins, it, it, it's hard to, you, you got to go through an agent to get to them. So, so it's tough. Uh, what do you think about the mayor's plan to deal with homeless situation through hospitalization? Listen, I don't talk politics on the show, but this one's a little near and dear to my heart. And, 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 and I, and I think, and I think, uh, I think I'm going to, I'm going to open this can of worms. A uh, good question, Alvarell. New York is a dangerous place right now. The subway is exceptionally dangerous. My girlfriend just texted me and said, I'm getting on at 72nd Street right now where somebody just got stabbed the other day. This is a huge problem in New York. The New York City subway system is a rolling mental institution homeless shelter. It is extremely, extremely dangerous. Why, just yesterday when I was on the way to the Brooke Smith book event, I saw a marauding band of youths walking down 23rd Street harassing people and it, it was gonna get i it was a scary moment um, i thought they were gonna there was 15 of them and they were they i thought they were gonna like you know really fuck some people up um but then the light turned green and i had to and i uh, and i had to keep going uh and make it to the event but new york's a really dangerous place uh what al is alluding to is that the mayor is uh passing some legislation that is going to literally take the people off the street um, and, and put them uh, into the hospitals. And I think it's a good thing. Um, it's, it's, it's really dangerous and these people need help. Um, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to simplify, uh, simplify things, but um, it, New York's become very dangerous um, and I'm all for it, man. Uh, people, uh, certain people should not be out uh, in, in, in living on the subway, uh, they need help. They, they, they need, they need medical help that they, they have, uh, uh, issues and they need to be addressed. That's just my take on it, man. You know, uh, not to go, not yet. Yeah, rest in peace. Yes. Rest in peace. Christine McVie. Absolutely. I've been, been, yeah, they need help. Absolutely. I'm not sure what's happening in Boston. I know the subway system of Boston, uh, shuts down at night. Uh, from what I remember, I think it still does. But here in New York, it's 24 hours, 
and there's certain like encampments in the subway and the subway is just fucking dangerous man really fucking dangerous yeah it's the worst time of the year for the homeless it's getting cold you know this this is a tragedy of epic proportions man this is not to be taken lightly it, it's a very sad case man people are suffering you know and it, it, it's tough man yo yo listen i i go out now i'm fucking armed you know it's like i go out with weapons it's dangerous out there you know um Yep, there's a lot of weird loonies on the subway. You'll never know what the yo, my girlfriend gets harassed constantly. She she just look no, here, listen. Here, here's here's from 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 my female unit, uh like 20 minutes ago. Had to get off my train because a nasty, dirty crackhead sat next to me, rocking back and forth and started harassing me. Now I'm waiting for another train. This just happened. This is my woman, you know? It's just, it's just, it's fucked. Anyway, on a lighter note, hey, thanks for watching the show today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back on a week from today with David Godless, which is going to be a very cool show. Uh, he, he documented the New York punk scene. Uh, incredible photos. His photos, a couple of his photos were in my film, Who the Fuck Is That Guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Alago. So that, that's going to be happening a week from today. So stand by for that. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Make sure you stop by again. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, maybe I'll see a couple of you at the screening on Wednesday. Um, I know a lot of you bought tickets for this. It's going to be, it's going to be a great event. And uh, yo, Ozzy from the High and the Mighty, what's up, bro? Cheers, everyone. Thank you all so much. Uh, I will see you soon. Soon, sooner. Sooner, sooner. Uh, that said, everybody okay? That's right. Do good things, brother. Do good things, and good things will come to you. I'll see you, I'll see you guys soon.